I'm Jacqueline Stewart, host of the Academy Museum podcast. This season, we're focusing on casting. And in our first episode, the drama of casting Alfred Hitchcock's 1940 classic, Rebecca. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. LAS Studios. How do LA is off this week, but we still have some good stuff lined up for you. In case you missed it, we're replaying some of our favorite episodes of the last year where we visited different LA neighborhoods. Today, let's go explore the architectural gems of Angelino Heights. See that ringer? Yeah. That's for the servants. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so obviously they had servants. And there's two staircases in this house. Oh. In most of these grand homes, because the servants dare not come down the main staircase. We're heading out for another neighborhood episode, and today we're exploring the evolution of Angelino Heights. You have a feeling of hometown. It's a historical area. It has some of the most beautiful architecture in LA. These homes were built by the titans of industry. This is Andrea Martinez Gonzalez. Born and raised in Los Angeles, California, specifically Echo Park, and within Echo Park, Angelino Heights. She's an Angelino Heights OG resident. My family on my mother's side came over here in 1904 because of the Mexican Revolution, and they were in Arizona first, and you paid two cents to cross the bridge into the United States. No papers, nothing. Just pay your toll and you're good to go. And she's lived here ever since. I have been going to Echo Park Lake since I was old enough to walk. We'd always go to the lake and fool around and then go home. Everybody went to the lake. We got to visit her today at her beautiful home. My grandmother bought this house in 1960. It's on the famous Carroll Avenue, which has more Victorian homes than anywhere else in the city. And when my grandmother died, I was the only grandchild, and she left this house to me. As I walked into her house, it felt like I was transported somewhere else. It feels historic. The way the natural light hits the living room, the staircase, the woodwork on the outside, it looks like a film set. This area is full of these unique, beautiful, vintage homes. And this didn't happen by accident. Well, this is an HPOZ, which means Historical Preservation Zone. And so you cannot do anything on the outside. You can do minimalist, ultra-modern on the inside, but don't you dare touch the outside. And why would anybody do minimalist with all this woodwork? I can't imagine them knocking that down. But anyway, whatever, whatever. Angelino Heights became the city's first historical preservation zone in the 1980s. A hundred years before that, during a huge real estate boom in the 1880s, It was designed to be a suburb of downtown, which was basically all the city was back then. Those burbs were designed for and by the rich. It was the second suburban area in the city. The first? Well, that was West Adams. Shout out to our pilot episode where we explore West Adams, my original hood. So yeah, there's a lot of history in Angelino Heights. And just like West Adams, the neighborhood has gone through many phases since its founding. There's some wonderful examples of Queen Anne architecture. Very wealthy people moved here and they have carriage houses because they had carriages in the 1890s. And there are some beautiful homes. I mean, and most of the homes have servants' quarters, service quarters. The backyards are huge. The lots are huge. It's not like today. These homes are really separated. Long driveways, most of them. And so they had horses and they had the hitching posts on Carroll Avenue. Have you ever seen those hitching posts? Some of them are still there. It's so interesting to think about horses just chilling on the street. And then I think the change came in the 30s. Immigrants started moving in here and the affluent started moving further away. Oh, let's not be near these poor people. And they would take these large homes and divide them into boarding homes and such. As middle and upper class white people started moving out of the area after World War II, immigrants started moving in. 
mostly Mexicans, but some Chinese, Filipino, and Southeast Asians too. It became home to a lot of folks who worked behind the scenes in Hollywood film studios. Then they started building these little bungalows that Echo Park's very famous for. They're all over the place. So because of these transformations, Angelina Heights has a diversity of architecture. There's Queen Anne and Eastlake Victorian, Mission Revival, Craftsman, California Bungalow, Brownstone, and Streamline Modern. Now, I know this is a theme that keeps popping up. Are you avoiding that word? Gentrification! That, that was going to be a separate question. <laughs> we okay, got to talk about what's happened more recently here, and basically everywhere else in L.A. As a homeowner, my God, my grandmother bought this home in 1960 for $49,000. Very, very, quotes, cheap. I got an offer for a million eight hundred thousand the other day, and I said no. Mm -hmm. I said no. So from that point of view, for the homeowners, it's been a bonanza. For the renters, it's been horrific and a tragedy. So I'm scanning the rentals online right now, and I'm seeing a nice two-bedroom apartment in like one of those converted Victorians. It's going for twenty-seven hundred dollars a month. And a four bedroom is listed for about 7,000. But many of the homeowners around here have not left. And they're Mexicans, Mexican Americans now, and they still live here. I'm one of them. Rising housing costs is a huge issue in the city. In our elections coverage, we told you that it's one of the most pressing issues to Angelinos. But Andrea did remind me of the homeowner perspective. And many of the original homeowners here who came the second wave in the early 1900s were immigrants, like Andrea's family. They've gotten top dollar that they never dreamed they would get. Here on the corner of Kensington and Douglas, they had a lovely little bungalow. They sold it for over a million bucks. And with that money, they were all able to move to their town in Mexico. They built their little house and they were happy. So I know there's a lot of people who are angry. And I get it, but then there's a lot of people who aren't. Like in everything, Brian. But here's the tea. There are more than a million more people in L.A. since Andrea's family bought that house in Carroll. And the amount of available housing just hasn't kept up. The hope is that some new leadership in the city can help make L.A. affordable again for regular folks. Time will tell, I guess. We'll be right back after this. I'm MG Lord. And I'm Antonia Cerejido. And we're hosts of LA Made from LAS Studios, telling the stories of bold local innovators. In the new season, we look at Barbie. She's a cultural icon. But what do you really know about her? We've got never before heard tapes with surprising details, like the truth behind her name. Our first attempt has been for bad. And the heated debate over Ken's anatomy. Subscribe to LA Made, the Barbie tapes, wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to How to LA. I'm Brian De Los Santos. Now, time for a little fun. Angelina Heights has been the backdrop to a bunch of TV shows and movies. One house on Carroll, a giant burgundy Victorian, is known now as a charmed house. You know, the show with the Hallowell sisters from the 90s. Okay, to be totally honest, I'm not much of a witch guy, and I've never watched the show. Don't twins? don't hate me, you know. Oh, you just came to, to the street for this? Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I'm a huge fan. Oh, awesome. <laughs> but What's it has name? a total cult following, and we ran into some pretty excited tourists from all over the place. It's amazing. <laughs> I am no word for that. Another fan favorite with Roots in Angelina Heights? Yep, we're talking about Fast and Furious. Scenes from these movies were shot all over LA, but the house belonging to Vin Diesel's character is not that far away from where we've been hanging out with Andrea. And so is Bob's Market, where Vin's character's family had a deli. Bob's actually became a historical landmark in 1979. Fans flocked to these spots for a photo op, but residents are kind of over these movies. And in August, they protested the filming of a new Fast and Furious in the neighborhood. These neighbors say that the films glorify street racing, which has become a real problem in L.A. So I get it. OK, I don't know about y'all, but all this walking and history talk got me hungry. So now I'm going to go eat. There's an Italian place on 
Sunset in Alvarado, Pizza Buono. It's been there forever since I was a kid. Good pizza, across from the car wash. All right, let's get some of that pizza. Okay. There's not chicken. It's technically an Echo Park, but Angelino Heights and Echo Park share a business Love district, everything. so it counts. Ooh, Chipotle. Well, we want to know what's your most popular pizza. Okay, my special lleva dos carnes y dos vegetales. Okay. Pepperoni, sausage, mushroom, and green pepper. How special? Yeah, I do yeah. that, yeah. This is an old school Italian pizzeria vibe. Okay. It's been in the family 25 years or so. My name is Israel Palacios, owner of Pizza Bona. The original owner was Italian. And these recipes, like the house pizza, haven't changed at all from the original Italian owners. The only things that have changed is obviously throughout the years, companies come and go, so you try to find a replacement product and whatnot, but for the most part, it's all the same. Oh, current. First of all, it's all melty. We love to see it. For me, pizza's like 65% bread, and the bread's hitting. Alrighty, y'all. I got a bunch of pizza in front of me, so I'm gonna go grub. Catch you all tomorrow. Support for this podcast is made possible by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe that quality journalism makes Los Angeles a better place to live.